Welcome to Spotlight. I'm Sue Rakowski, and with me today is Dan Casey. He is with the EDA of St. Clair County. Welcome, Dan. Thanks for having me, Sue. So we've had a big, big announcement here in St. Clair County. Tell me about it. Big economic impact. Yeah, so this is uh, probably the largest project that's been announced in the county since 2005, other than maybe the DTE power plant. Um, but this is a big job creator, too. So um, uh, Magna Electric Vehicle Structures, MEVS, which is a new division of Magna, um, built a plant last year in the city of St. Clair that was 368,000 square feet. It was the biggest project that happened last year. So yesterday or this week, we announced the expansion of that plant by an additional 740,000 square feet. So basically combined, it'll be about 1.1 million square feet in size. Wow, that's huge. Yeah, it's the second largest building in St. Clair County when it's done. Um, and it, they're also going to be adding 920 new positions wow. to the plant, right, over the, a three-year period. So it's a $426 million investment. It's a big, big project. Um, what's interesting is that we had to compete to win the project. Even though it's an expansion, mm -hmm. it was so big that, you know, the Magna team looked to take it somewhere else, even out of state. Wow. You know, just keep what we had here, but, you know, build something larger somewhere else. So we had to win the project just like any other type of project that we compete for. Um, early on, the city had to make some commitments, the city of St. Clair. They had to make some commitments on infrastructure, um, specifically water and sewer capacity mm -hmm. and water pressure. So they had to commit to making sure that we have that. So there's going to be some significant investments that are going to be needed to to take place in the next couple of years to accommodate this project. Okay, and wow, the job impact. Tell me about the kind of positions, and that's just a huge number of uh, new employment positions. Yeah, so they, they uh, last year when they opened the first plant, they hired a lot of the technical staff that they would need. They're gonna be adding to that technical staff. Mm -hmm. So they'll, they'll need more engineers, um, more quality control managers, and so on. But by and large, these are going to be production positions. Okay. What people need to know is that the Magna plant is highly automated. They have 300 robots in the current plant. The new building is going to be three times the size, so theoretically, you know, three times as many robots, although there will be a warehousing component there. Still, a, a lot of automation there. Okay. They use robots for painting. They use them for um, welding is the predominant thing. But even their quality control systems that they put in place um, are automated. So... Normally, you'd have people looking at parts, inspecting parts, look for flaws, but they have a, a system that actually automates that process. So it's the right kind of jobs. It, you know, they, the pay is going to be really good, and um, our challenge would be finding the people. Okay. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, there's going to be more to share about this exciting investment in St. Clair County. So stay tuned. We'll be right back on Spotlight. The St. Clair County Department of Veterans Affairs is here to serve those who have served, military veterans and their dependents. Call and make an appointment to discuss and apply for benefits to include health care, disability compensation, and community services today at 810-989-6945. Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm continuing my discussion with Dan Casey about this exciting new development in St. Clair County. How are we going to attract talent to fill this huge position of jobs that need to be filled? Yeah, see, so that's going to be our big challenge on the project, but we're excited about that opportunity because ultimately what it means is growth for the county. It's, it's going to be growth in tax revenue, uh, also population growth. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have currently 920 people available in the labor force to fill these jobs. We have a couple of thousand people in the, that are unemployed currently, so there'll be uh, some of those folks potentially could work at the plant. But um, I think ultimately what we're going to have to do is have an aggressive campaign to market the county for a relocation of talent. Okay. Um, the, 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 the easiest thing for us to do is to work on the commuters. So 40% of our labor force today commutes out of the county to work, almost all of them going south okay. into the rest of Metro Detroit. So the easiest thing for us to do will be to market to those folks that we have great jobs available. And right they can, here at home. At home, and they can get rid of their, their drive every day. Sure. And with higher gas prices, that's something that I think a lot of people would consider. So that'll be the first thing we do. But beyond that, we have an extensive uh, marketing campaign that we began a couple of years ago that has been paying some dividends. This will now be accelerated. We'll spend more money on marketing. 
And in particular, um, digital marketing is the way to go, I think, because for the money, we get the biggest reach. Mm -hmm. um, we did a campaign last year in the fall and uh, almost a year ago, and, and, and it lasted for five weeks, and we are, the traffic on our website um, increased by 1,500%. Wow, that's a huge number. Yeah, so, and that was from doing one digital campaign where we identified certain markets in the country where we wanted our messages shown, and then we paid on a per-click basis for those ads, and so, you know, we were focusing on places that were having natural disaster problems or lack of water, um, or, or places like Texas that has an abundance of, say, immigrants or, or people that are available for work. And so we m focused on those markets and then drove traffic to our website where we have a jobs board and we have information on housing. Okay. So Speak, um, Speaking yeah. of that, housing, <laughs> where are we going to put these folks? I know real estate is a hot commodity right now. Mm -hmm. How are we going to handle that? So with last year's announcement, um, it was interesting that within one week of making that announcement on the new project, um, we had three subdivisions, that um, two of which were the final phases and one that was a new subdivision that were announced. Um, I, I don't believe that was a coincidence. Uh, I think that the landowners, the developers, were just waiting for the market mm -hmm. to adjust to the point where they felt that the risk was minimal. And, then, sure. and so they were announced and now they're all under construction and houses are being built. I think this project is much bigger than that one was, and I think it's going to accelerate that process despite a tough economy and supply chain issues in the construction industry. Um, I think that uh, the opportunity is now there for those builders uh, to begin those. I mean, it takes two to five years to build a subdivision, sure, right? Sure, sure. And these jobs will be created over a three-year period, so okay. we've got an opportunity now to attract more apartments, more single-family home development, to the community, and when you do that, that attracts more people, and that also um, creates the, the need for more retail and services. Okay. So you could see more retail development in the region as well. Okay. Where can people find out more information? Uh, they can go to the EDA's website, um, www.edascc.com. And like I said, we have a jobs board there, we have a housing page, we have another page that focuses on talent. Okay. Um, and resources in the community. So that's the great place to go. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Dan. And thank you for having me. Of course. And thank you for watching this edition of Spotlight.